Hi, this video is full of tips for anyone working in the Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve. How many tips? I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna to try to cover a lot of foundational tools for motion graphics or just entry level animation in Fusion. Fusion is awesome, really powerful, but sometimes you really need to poke around to learn bit by bit. So I'm here to save you all some poking. I might call this like a top five or a top 10 list or something, no matter how many tips there are. We'll see. Let's get started. So I'm here in DaVinci Resolve. I have an open timeline and a blank Fusion composition on my timeline. I just dragged it here from the edit page and I can click this button to open the Fusion page. And here you will see the only thing we have here is a media out node. Whatever we do in the Fusion page, we just need to connect to that. And that is how it gets sent back to the edit page. So let's get started with some cool stuff. I'm gonna create a blank background. I'm just gonna make that white and I'm going to connect to that background, a polygon mask node. I will preview the background on viewer two. And if I select the polygon, I can draw a little wavy line on it. Cool. And even with the background selected, you don't see anything. And that's because on the polygon node, uh, I just need to pull up this border width a little bit. And now you see that line. Importantly, uh, let me copy this background node, paste it over. Let me copy both of those, paste that again. And if I come into the polygon and instead select the endpoint, and circle around and connect it to that initial starting point and preview that second background, it fills in that area. And while that border width does extend the edges, it is a solid, but you have a control for that, this solid checkbox. If you uncheck that, it will go back to being an outline, but an outline of the entire shape. And here is one really important thing. If you have just that line, uh, without it being connected, then in your polygon mask, you have this position and length controls. If I pull the length down, you'll see that it will start to remove that line until the very beginning. And then you could increase that to sort of draw on this line. And position is very interesting because position defaults to zero and that is over the entire length of your mask. So if I start sliding that up, it sort of looks like it does the opposite, but it is actually pushing that past the end of where the line is. So while this starts at zero, I could actually go and set this to negative one, and then it, there's nothing there except a little dot here, which we will get to. But if I go from negative one and start sliding up, it actually writes on. When it gets to zero, it will be full, and then it starts writing off. So this would be a really cool way to animate something on and then animate something off. But like I said before, let me pull up this border width to really see. If I go all the way back to negative one here, and this is a, a similar thing for if you're just doing this length, if you wanna keep this position at zero and bring the length down to zero as well, you always have this one little dot here and then it grows. Or if you have uh, this position at negative one, uh, it has a little dot, you could always go to like negative 1.01 and it would go off the edge, but you don't need to do that because let's just set this back to zero, bring the length down to zero and you have this one dot here. You have that dot there because of this control above it, this border style or this end cap style. Right now it is rounded and it is what gives you those rounded edges. This re looks really good on this wavy line like this, but especially if you are working in a like square situation, if I bring that down to zero and then set this cap to flat, it's completely gone. And now when it draws on, it is that flat line that comes to a perfect end and uh, it functions exactly the same way. If I go to negative one on position, you see nothing. Then it comes all the way up and if it comes up, to one on the far side, it is completely gone. I used to keyframe uh, like multiple things at a time to achieve this effect. Like I would have a keyframe on the level to just pop it off and then on when you can just change the end cap um, and that makes uh, animating anything on completely from being off completely really easy. But something you might've noticed here in this second copy where we, uh, this can be a solid, um, this functions like some of our other masks. So to demonstrate, I will copy this background uh, and just grab an ellipse mask or a circle mask. Now, if I preview that, you see we have a circle, but that circle also has this solid checkbox. I can uncheck that, bring up the border width, and we have an outline circle. Now watch, when I toggle on or off this solid, that position and length tools go away, as well as the cap style. Because when it's solid, you can't really write on from a path when it is filling in the center of that path. You could do like a radial wipe, but that's a little different, especially when you're dealing with like more complex geometry like that custom polygon node. But if I uncheck that, then you have those exact same controls. And this is really helpful when something is connected like this, um, because now that position just rotates the starting point of that. So you could only want this to be like halfway around, oh, 0.5. 
And then you could just animate this position to constantly spin and have some really cool ongoing motion and like iterate on that a few times. You could build like a really cool like custom UI looking thing. It's awesome. But again, even if I have uh, position at zero and length at zero, we have that starting dot unless you change that cap style. Now it would just cleanly right on. Cool, cool, cool. I don't know how many tips that's been so far, uh, but it's time for our first bonus tip. This is a bit of a workaround, but it's very powerful. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new background. I will also make this one white, but I'm going to come over to image and you'll see that by default, um, it has set this background shape because my original timeline is 4k. It has set uh, the dimensions for this background to 4k, but I can uncheck that. And I'm going to bring this all the way down to 32 pixels wide and 18 pixels high. Now, if you're smart, you might've noticed that those numbers are just two times nine by 16, 16 by nine, that normal default aspect ratio. And that's on purpose. I'm gonna click that. And if I preview that on viewer two, uh, you'll see because I didn't have anything here, it defaulted to full screen. But if I bring this on to, uh, I brought that in viewer one rather, but if I bring it over to viewer two, um, you'll see it'll be just this little dot and you will actually have to scale into that appropriate level. Um, but that is cool there. Let me bring back this wavy line here because we're about to do something cool. But if you don't have anything pulled up, it scales this to fit. But this is actually only 32 pixels by 18 pixels. So there is not much I can actually do here. If I put on like text or anything, you would see these giant chunks. Um, let me try to demonstrate very, very quickly. Um, I will copy this background, paste it, make this like this purpley color. I can put a circle circle mask on it, but if I preview that, um, it doesn't have any of those sharp edges because it is uh, blending this around a very limited number of pixels. That's fine. But I'm gonna pull that up on viewer one and right click in the viewport. I'm gonna come to options, show pixel grid. This is showing us our individual pixels. And I'm going to right click controls, snap to pixel. Now this is very cool and this really leverages uh, the powerful viewer system we have going on. Because you'll notice that even though I have this very small background selected and on viewer one, if I select like the polygon mask, that is also that you are viewing in its entirety on this right viewer, you see that mask over both viewers at a time. So now I could like select all of these points. I'm gonna come over to this option to change these all to linear. So now it just zigzags between them. But remember I have snapped to pixel on on this comp so I can grab this point and oh I was grabbing all of them I can grab this first point and it will only let me perfectly put that on any of these intersecting lines so I can bring that to the edge I can have this come over here um, I can just have all these lines perfectly on a uh, any of these points you can click to add a line and it will instantly snap right to it this is a really uh, easy and simple way to get like all those perfect right angles that you wouldn't want to try to like fidget with too much cool and all the way over so now we have all these perfect angles and you can see what they did on the right i can come back to this polygon control and we do have this square cap but on that border style first cap uh currently it is unrounded you can change that to bevel which will cut these angles or you can have a sharp point there or you can have this square angle which i think looks really good especially if we bring down this border with a while and now back on that polygon, you can like draw this on and like build this over itself. I included this in a very early video when I recreated a shroud stream transition. Uh, it did something like this. We added some glows. It looked pretty cool. But if you didn't know, this is how you can get snapping or like make sure you have perfect proportions in the fusion page. You could toss on a little keyframe on that length. Zoop. If you watch through, it would just zoo, zoo, zoo. all those corners. Nice. Now I want to show you one thing I've been doing a lot and I think it is pretty cool. So let me get this set up. I'm going to create two ellipse masks and we'll pipe those uh, both just into this green background I'm down the size on those. So now uh, we have these two little green ping pong balls floating around here. And another thing I had talked about before, uh, I'm going to create a white line or a white background this time, connect a polygon node to that. And I'm just going to click, click kind of by each square. But if I select this option to uh, insert and modify, I can select both of these points. And I'm going to come up to this option here, check this down arrow and go to publish 
points, also shift P. And now we have the actual point coordinate data for those in the inspector. So I could change this to move around this line wherever I want. I'm just gonna pull up the border width a little bit on that. Oh, and actually connect it to the background. Ooh, too much. Connect those backgrounds together and emerge. And hey, we have got something here. First, just so we have some action going on, I'm gonna come into these ellipse, right click on the center and go to modify with perturb. Um, I will pull down the strength a whole lot on that. And then I will do the same on the second mask, modify it with perturb, bring down the shake a little bit. And if we scrub through our timeline, those will just float around. Uh, right now they both have random speed of zero. So they are moving in the same motion click that a few times. And then now those will be doing their own thing. But back on that polygon, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is right click on that shape animation and remove the polygon polyline. It sets an initial keyframe, sometimes that can mess you up. But I'm gonna come to this point zero, right click and go to connect to perturb one. Remember we added a perturb on both of these two lip masks, value, and then point one, or like the, the second point, which is point one, uh, connect to perturb to value. Now, check this out, you watch through, and now as those green circles ping pong around, uh, this line is being dragged with it. And if you wanted it to look a little cleaner, I could always come to this merge, press control T, swap those inputs and outputs, and now, hey, look at that. That looks really cool. But one really cool effect I like, check this out. For this, I am actually going to switch that back. So the line is on top, but we are kind of going to address that. I'm gonna select both of these ellipses. I'm gonna click control C, then I'm gonna click off and do control shift V. And that creates instanced nodes. It has these green line connecting them no matter what we do. And this is kind of like a copy, but it's a copy that you can selectively uncopy. Check this out. If I come up to just uh, either of these, they will be previewed together. Uh, this is white and black because that is how Resolve shows you mask data. I can select this one. I'm going to right click on border width and come down to D instance. You'll see it will remove this green checkbox. And if I drag that up, the circle will be a little bit larger. I'm gonna bring it up quite a bit. Uh, copy that number so I have it and do the same thing on this other instance. D instance, copying that number. And now coming out of these masks, I'm gonna make this a mask on the merge that is bringing in that line. And if I do that, you see it cuts out the middle. Oh no, that looks bad. I was going for it the opposite of this look where it has a line connecting them, but it doesn't actually touch. But I can come into the merge settings and click apply mask inverted, or I could have done that in, in these masks, in the actual max, mask data. I don't know if one is actually better than the other. But check this out. Now I have this line sort of connecting these two dots, but it never actually touches them. This is a really interesting look I've been using a lot on recent projects. And again, I do have a video specifically about this, about like connecting these assets. You can have so many different points flying around and lines connecting all of them. It can look very, very cool. And underneath that is the system for uh, publishing and connecting points. And this is actually more than just cool. It can be a very powerful tool. Um, for conserving processing power. When you have instance nodes or nodes that are connected through that publish tool, it actually saves the computing power because it just knows that both of those are being pulled from the same value versus something like expressions, which are very powerful in their own right. But if you're using um, expressions, that is something that has to be processed every frame. The expression has to like refresh and make sure that nothing has changed on the node that it is looking for to drive the expression. It's a little complicated, uh, but this system is not only cool, it's, it's very helpful when you're building a lot of complex, especially like presets and templates for Resolve. Last big tip. If I come back to this initial polyline I drew, I right click down on this animation thing and I go to insert with custom poly. I will click that and in modifiers, it gives me all these new options. Custom poly is a modifier that was added in DaVinci Resolve 18. And I don't know what any of this does. I lied. This isn't a tip. This is a cry for help. If you figured out custom poly, please tell me because it's probably very cool. All the other custom stuff is um, but I don't know what to do with it. I'll be exploring. Um, if I figure it out, I'll bring it to all of you. Um, but for now, uh, I really hope that was helpful. Bye. <laughs>